The first V3 booster, B-18, has just exploded during its initial test, and SpaceX quickly released updates. So what exactly happened, and is this entirely bad news? Meanwhile, Rocket Lab has launched a new Electron mission that achieved several important milestones. Let's explore all of this in today's episode of Great SpaceX. The focus at Starbase right now is centered entirely on the B-18 incident at the Massey test site. Yes, that same Massey test test site once again. In the span of a single year, this location has now witnessed two unexpected and highly disruptive events. Before this accident, the movement of B-18, which carried many long-anticipated upgrades, had brought a great deal of excitement. Many considered it a major step forward toward the first V-3 flight planned for next year. It felt like real momentum was finally building. But as always, progress in rocketry is rarely smooth or predictable. At exactly 4 minutes and 58 seconds past 4 o'clock, everything changed. During what appeared to be a small and routine test, B-18 suddenly experienced an explosion within the fuel tank area, specifically in the section where the liquid oxygen tank is located. The blast radius was wide and extremely clear in the footage. Thankfully, there was no fire afterward, which was a small relief in an otherwise chaotic moment. In the hours that followed, images of B-18's condition spread quickly as they were updated throughout the morning. From the side facing the test tanks, the booster's shell looked severely deformed, almost like an empty soda can that had been crushed from the inside. The chines in that region also appeared to be damaged. It was the first obvious signal that whatever had occurred inside the vehicle was significant, but the opposite side of the booster told a much more alarming story. The shell had been torn open, leaving behind a large, jagged gap. This was likely the initial location where the internal failure began. The opening looked as if something massive had ripped outward, almost like a creature had burst through and escaped. Once daytime photos became available, it also appeared that the internal fuel tank had suffered damage. Even so, despite the severity of the blast and the structural deformation, the booster somehow remained standing. That was an encouraging sign and demonstrated that some parts of the overall structure handled the incident better than expected. Naturally, the big question everyone asked was simple. What exactly happened? After any event of this scale, the community immediately looks to SpaceX for information. Fortunately, the company responded quickly and provided early details. Their first message confirmed that no one had been hurt, explaining that personnel always remain at a safe distance during these kinds of tests. They emphasized that the site remained secured and that teams were working on a plan to re-enter safely. Their next update gave a clearer explanation of the cause. B-18 had suffered an anomaly during gas system pressure testing, which was being conducted ahead of the full structural proof test. They clarified that no propellant was loaded into the vehicle and that the engines had not yet been installed. This detail shed light on why there was no fire and why the damage pattern looked different from typical cryogenic test failures. Since this was not a cryogenic or fuel-based test, the vehicle had been filled with high-pressure gas, likely nitrogen and oxygen, to examine the performance of the new gas system that had been introduced for the V3 upgrades. The intention was to push the gas system to its limits before moving on to full structural pressurization and then eventually to cryogenic trials. However, it now seemed clear that the gas system was not able to withstand the pressures involved. Still, the issue might not have originated solely from the gas system. There are several other possibilities that observers have considered. One major element involved is the COPVs, or Composite Overwrapped Pressure Vessels. These vessels sit above the engine compartment near the chines, which is close to the region where the damage occurred. It's possible that as pressure increased inside the system, the COPVs were affected. If one of them ruptured or released compressed gas suddenly, the force could have combined with the high-pressure gas from the system test and blown open the liquid oxygen tank and outer shell, which matches what we saw in the aftermath. In this scenario, the COPVs might not be the original source of the failure, but they may have worsened the damage once the initial rupture occurred. There's also speculation that the key issue may lie in the gas system line itself. If a pipe located near the COPVs failed first, the sudden burst of pressure could have sent shockwaves into the surrounding hardware, triggering a chain reaction that involved the COPV 
bees and ultimately destroyed the surrounding structure. Right now, this remains informed speculation based on SpaceX's limited early statements. As the company noted, their teams need time to investigate the exact cause before they can be certain. Until then, all we can do is wait for further updates. Regardless of the eventual root cause, the reality is clear. The damage is too severe for B-18 to contribute to any future testing or missions. The booster will need to be transported back to Mega Bay or possibly the Rocket Garden for evaluation. The lift support equipment was already seen arriving at Massey, which means the process of moving B-18 may begin soon. But with the size of the rupture, the internal deformation, and the condition of the tanks, it's unlikely that this booster can be fully repaired. Replacing such a large structural section or an entire tank stack would be extremely difficult. After supporting the investigation, the booster will likely be retired and scrapped. Understandably, this is a disappointing moment for many people watching the V3 development. SpaceX spent an unusually long time assembling B-18. From May to early November, nearly half a year was devoted to stacking the vehicle. With expectations already high for the V3 upgrades, this incident has raised concerns for some observers. The idea that the very first prototype of the new version failed so early has fueled fears of a systemic design flaw. However, this is a pessimistic view. Many development programs experience early failures that do not indicate long-term issues. In my view, this appears to be one unusual incident rather than evidence of a wider structural problem. Even so, the short-term impact will be significant. SpaceX has not yet stacked the next V3 booster B19. This means there's no immediate replacement available to continue preparations for Flight 12. B-18's stacking took six months, and if the teams speed up the process thanks to their experience, a new booster cannot realistically be completed before the year ends. The company will also need to finish investigating the cause before they can safely proceed with B-19, and once B-19 is stacked, it'll still need to undergo its own complete testing campaign, which could last several weeks or more. For these reasons, the chances of seeing Flight 12, the first V-3 flight in January, now appear appear very low. This delay will affect not only this mission, but also the sequence of follow-up flights, many of which carry important goals. Looking at the broader picture, this setback also impacts SpaceX's competitive position for Artemis 3. The pace of Starship and HLS development has already been slower than many hoped, and now SpaceX must also contend with Blue Origin, which is advancing its own lunar lander program at a surprisingly strong pace. Still, setbacks like this are part of the long and unpredictable predictable journey of rocket development. SpaceX has faced challenge after challenge since its early days. Even this year, the S-36 accident was arguably worse than the B-18 event. Yet, with smart engineering and quick adaptation, the company bounced back faster than anyone expected and continued pushing forward. In many ways, it's fortunate that B-18 failed during a pressure test rather than during a full cryogenic test, a static fire, or worse, during an actual launch attempt. So in moments like this, keeping perspective matters. Progress is never linear, and every major space program faces challenging stretches. If you want to show support for the teams pushing Starship forward, you can simply say, don't give up, SpaceX, down in the comments below. While work on B-18 will take center stage at Starbase, the team must continue advancing several other critical areas. The top priority is a full evaluation of the systems at the Massey test site, the booster stand, the quick disconnect system at its center, and all surrounding infrastructure will require careful inspection for any any signs of stress or damage. Any issues must be addressed immediately to avoid further delays in the testing flow. Over at the production site, progress on Ship 39 must continue without interruption. In light of the issues with B-18, SpaceX will likely take additional care in reviewing the ship's systems to ensure there are no similar vulnerabilities. Once conditions at Massey are stable, S-39 will eventually be transported there for testing. If everything proceeds smoothly, it can move forward with its own set of preparations for flight. At this sensitive stage, SpaceX needs to ensure that the ship does not become the next source of delay. Work on the next booster also needs to begin as soon as possible. Any components not associated with the problem on B-18 should be prepared for stacking. SpaceX can even begin stacking operations inside Mega Bay while the investigation into B-18 continues. This parallel approach will help reduce the overall impact on the launch schedule and regain momentum. At the same time, construction of new facilities, such as Gigabay, must remain on track. 
These long-term infrastructure upgrades are essential for future production pacing and launch cadence. At the launch site, the debut of Pad 2 will likely be pushed back due to the B-18 incident, but completion and testing should still be prioritized so it can enter service the moment a booster is ready. Nearby, transformation work on Pad 1 also needs to accelerate. Recently, SpaceX removed the final leg of the OLM and shortened the chopsticks, signaling that upgrades remain ongoing despite setbacks. The coming weeks will be pivotal for SpaceX, and it'll be fascinating to watch how the team balances recovery work with the steady push forward across Starbase. Meanwhile, at 7.43 a.m. Eastern on the 20th, Rocket Lab completed another successful electron mission from its New Zealand launch site, sending a confidential payload into orbit. What set this mission apart was the announcement itself, made just five hours before liftoff. That unusually short notice points to a customer operating under tight timelines and strict secrecy. Rocket Lab shared only the essentials, confirming that the mission carried a single satellite for a commercial client who chose to remain anonymous. The mission, named Follow My Speed, was later confirmed to be a complete success, and it came with several impressive milestones. First, it marked the company's second launch within a span of just 48 hours. Before this mission, Rocket Lab had launched the suborbital Haste mission at 8 a.m. on November 18th from Launch Complex 2. Achieving two launches so close together highlights the company's growing capability to operate at a rapid pace. Second, the Electron program reached its 18th launch of the year when both orbital and suborbital missions are counted, with orbital missions accounting for 15 of them. Rocket Lab still has time left in the year, so this record may grow even further. Even more remarkable is the fact that every one of these missions this year has been successful. According to the company, this achievement sets a new record for Electron's annual performance and reinforces its position as the world's most frequently flown orbital small launch vehicle. Rocket Lab credits this to its high cadence, launch sites, streamlined production processes, experienced workforce, and reliable technology. This mission also marked Rocket Lab's 76th overall launch, a number that demonstrates how quickly the company has grown and how it now exceeds the total launch counts of several long-established competitors. At the current pace, milestones such as the 100th launch mark are getting much closer. Looking ahead, Rocket Lab is preparing to introduce Neutron, a larger reusable rocket set to debut next year. With rapid progress on Electron and anticipation building for Neutron, the company's momentum shows no sign of slowing down. In any case, folks, this has been Kevin with Great SpaceX. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe if you haven't already to stay up to date with yours truly on the latest milestones in SpaceX's journey. Thank you so much for watching, and always remember, curiosity, imagination, and inspiration will follow you so long as you keep looking up.